Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 27. Seven. 27. Seven. 27. No, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. I've You've got to count. I believe you. We do that every week, and it's still funny. Mm. Uh, but we got lots of cool stuff to talk about. Uh, you've got your update. We've got stuff to look at. We've got questions. We got questions. A box full of junk. A great question from uh, from a, a, a one of our one of our viewers. And mm. uh, and if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room right this very second. Uh, Jeff Holman is in our chat room. And that's he, the Facebook chat room. That's right. And uh, get those questions to us so we can answer them because George and I love tech questions. That's what gets us going. Sure do. All right. All that and more coming up on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your Voice Over Audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. All righty, we're here for Tech Talk. Our favorite thing to do because you guys watch this stuff and digest it and... Hopefully you guys listen to us. And then we hear people tell us on the street. I oh, watched your show and now I'm using that mic and my studio sounds amazing. And my act, I'm, I'm booking stuff left and right because I bought that mic. Yeah. Not what, really. What I <laughs> love is how it works. people recognizing me on the street <laughs> and not here in L.A. Like on a corner in like Carmel. <laughs> in Carmel it's like, yeah. well, I'm like, wow. On vacation. Pe- yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, it's kind of fun. So there's obviously a lot of you out there watching it. Right. Uh, but there's a reason you guys watch and that's because, and we're, we're not doing this to blow our own horn here, but uh, thank you. Was that you? Uh, George and I have more experience with home voiceover studios than anybody else on God's green earth. And in some of the brown patches too, especially here in Southern California. (laughs) Uh, but I think it's probably a combined over 50 years experience doing all this. I think that's this. pretty accurate. <laughs> Give or take a few years. Uh, but it's a unique environment, and mm. you guys you know, want to learn how to do it properly. And the best way to do that is to make sure somebody who actually knows what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. Thank you. Uh, actually gets to hear what's going on in there and make sure that when you step up to the mic, all you have to do is hit record. And not worry about the tech. Not to think about a million things and settings and knobs and plugins. Because and you don't really blah, need blah, any of that blah, stuff. Blah, 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 if you blah. set the room up right in the first place by somebody who knows how it's supposed to be set up, look at the time and money you can save. Yeah. And that's what George and I do professionally, which is why we come to you every week with, uh, with or every other week with Tech Talk, uh, giving you little tips and hints about mm-hmm. how to do things, uh, showing you a lot of stuff that you probably don't need. Uh, but, but it's fun to look at and fun to talk about, yeah. uh, but also the stuff that is actually quite simple and makes your life easier. Mm-hmm. And if you want to work with George, who has all sorts of services, how do you do that? Uh, you can go over to georgethe.tech 
Uh, it's got a menu of services and a scheduling system where you can book real-time consults. Or I can just make you a little basic processing to polish up the audition a little bit. Or design a studio from the ground up or make an, ad uh, ad an audiobook mastering workflow for you, whatever it is, I, there's a lot of stuff on there. If you're overwhelmed, just email me on the contact page and we'll steer you in the right direction because <laughs> there's a lot of options on there, I know. Dan also does a lot of this tech stuff on his website, his home over at... HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I tell you what I do and how I do it, how I love going into people's houses not just to go into their houses, but to actually see their studios. You and like to get, root around in their closets, don't you? I, I do. It's amazing some of the things I see in there. Uh, but making sure that you're in the environment to record properly and getting you set up properly so that you sound great and that your audio is not going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the ways you can do that, if you've already set one up, if you've already got the studio set up and you want to hear if your audio is the way it should be, you can go to my uh, specimen collection cup, uh, which is at the bottom of my homepage. Click on that, $25. I will analyze your audio. And if I think you need some major help, I will let you know. If if it's just little tiny things here or there, go, eh, do this, do that, let me know, and then we can take it from there. Yeah, and this isn't all just like it's this number and this thing. It's not all about these, you know, numbers. It's knowing what it's supposed to sound like because we've heard so many home studios we know what things should sound like in context and right. that's that's a lot of what that value is and getting i had that sound check the the it's a really valuable thing for you for you guys to know that what you're putting out there really is on par with where it should be yeah because by the way you don't hire you yeah. so if you're doing it to satisfy your own ears Chances are you, you might per, be off base sometimes. You might be. Yeah. Let two guys who know what it's supposed to sound like listen to it. And yep. we'll let you know if it sounds right. All right. That's enough of that. Okay. Anyway. So what's in your <laughs> tech update this week? Um, honestly, I don't have a ton of new stuff to talk about because, you know, NAM, the big music trade show, was a couple weeks ago. All the new stuff is announced. I did my video, blah, blah, blah. But because it's always coming up, and this piece of gear is so incredibly well marketed and it just is in the constant conversation among my voiceover colleagues. I'll bring this up. The Universal Audio Apollo interface. Um, people are being recommended it all the time. I know I've certainly done my share of doing so over the last five years or so. Um, but I, I recommend it with some serious caveats. And so I just really wanted... For people that watch the show and hear us talk about it, at some point we are going to actually record some audio with it and demonstrate it along with a whole bunch of interfaces. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let me just tell you a few caveats of situations that you sh probably should avoid. If you have the money and you're ready to upgrade, maybe not this, maybe this isn't the right thing for you per se. And these are the few things to watch out for. One is, don't flame me for this, but I'm going to say it. If you're on Windows, you don't want to get the Apollo yet. Um, I know they have a USB version, which was designed specifically for Windows. And then there's a Thunderbolt 3 version, which supposedly works on Windows. Just uh, uh, right now, avoid it. Um, because the drivers are just, they're just not up to speed yet. You know, this, like some other softwares were, that we all know and, and systems, it was really designed around the Mac platform first and foremost. They obviously focus the vast majority of their R&D and time on that. Right. And Windows was late to the party, the support. And so it's not well fleshed out. Certain things don't work at all or or, or weird, like the fact that it, you can't get audio into Chrome. And that kills it for people using IPDTL, uh, Source Connect Now, things like that. There's just There's just still major issues. So I would avoid Universal Audio Apollo if you're a diehard Windows user. Two, um, if you're not doing, so so one of the things that the Apollo does is it has this ability to have processing real time or front end processing so that when you're recording, it's going through a chain of different things. It's kind of, it's actually new tech rec recreating a retro way of doing things. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, We've been saying for years it's better to record, dry, and process and post. Afterwards. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because once it's on there, 
it's on there it's forever. It's printed that way for good. So unless you're doing a lot of like very time sensitive live directed stuff on Source Connect and IPDTL, ISDN for those 10 of you that are still using that for some bizarre reason, studios that still use that. Um, there are some situations where that front end processing can be definitely to your advantage. That's because you're sending out audio, streaming it to a studio, and you want to give them something that's a little bit more polished up than just the raw audio for different reasons. One, because maybe you need it for your studio to sound as clean or as quiet as it should. Maybe you need it because the studio on the other end doesn't know what the hell they're doing. And if you don't send it to them cleaned up and or like sweetened, it's going to sound like garbage on the air. Almost every affiliate station in the entire U.S. is like has that problem. Um, so that's a that's another that's a reason. But for how many people is that in voiceover? It's it's, it's such a, a small, tiny, you know, even smaller than that. It's a really the small. The people that do it are people who are established. They are required to have it, but you don't have it to get work. You yeah. work to work your way up yeah, to have exactly. it. So having it at that expense. The return on investment is yeah. not going to be there right up front. And my last reason why not to maybe get the Apollo is that you are kind of technically challenged, but you kind of like to just figure it out. <laughs> you are going to go down the deepest, horrible, dark rat hole trying to learn how to do some basic features with this thing. And and if you, you may end up buying it and never make it past the absolute basic thing that it does, you may not even be able to figure out how to get the headphones to work. So it's... <laughs> It's complicated to set up. I've set them up. I have it. I definitely have it dialed. I know how to design and set this thing up. So if you've heard all of this and you're going, I still really want one, then then let me know. I can set you up. But really, um, I would avoid it. So if you're probably people on, on Windows are probably, well, what should I get then? Um, and that's something I want to answer in a quantitative way. Okay. Wait, which is it? Qualitative or quantitative? Well, quali quantitative would be in in you know enumerated fashion and uh -huh. qualitative would be like this is better than that uh, maybe it's qualitative okay we want to answer that qualitatively <laughs> and one way we want to do that is by comparing a whole bunch of audio interfaces right this is a big project we got up dan and i got to make some time it's not something we're going to do live on the show because it's dreadfully boring yeah but we want to shoot out the apollo against Stuff as expensive as the Apollo, right. like the Audient ID22, the Apogee Duet, things like this, and as lowly as the Steinberg UR12. Which is and, a great unit. And we have a we have a pile actually. Yeah, here we go. Of uh, okay, so th this is just stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is just what is what was on my shelf at home. This is a new UR12. It's ready to go in somebody's studio someday. Um, the Tascam oh, okay. UH7, is that the UH7000? Yeah, the UH7000. I want to try this. Highly one. obscure, but kind of interesting. And then some old classics like the uh, the uh, Avid Mbox, Mbox 3 Mini, which is 10 years old, maybe? Yeah. So we're not only going to be comparing like it's price. Growing, it's growing. It has to, you have to shave it now. It's <laughs> Spider it's legs. Getting, yeah. Ew. Yeah. Dead spider. Um, <laughs> this is for you, Ella. My daughter <laughs> hates spiders. Um Anyway, we're going to compare things in different price ranges and things of different generations. So, like, again, things that are 10 years old versus something that's maybe three years old versus we'll have the mixer, the mixer face Ooh. is in the little bag here, a mixer face. Uh, that's cutting edge tech for sure. And, of course, the Apollo I mentioned. Maybe an old ap Apogee 1. Which is a great unit. A great way. unit. So we're just going to try a, an experiment. Years ago, Dan and I did like the super duper mic shootout, and it's been hugely popular on YouTube. It has. Hugely. And so many people mo mentioned, hey, that guy, I love his voice, man. That guy's <laughs> voice is awesome. What's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> so the plan is we're going to, at some point, do a sort of a systematic and boring test where we set up Dan in the studio on the same mic and just enter, you know, we're going to plug each one in. Same script, same mic placement, one by one. And we're just going to try to listen to these things. And are we hearing any measurable or noticeable audibly diff? We're not measuring anything, guys. This is going to be completely done by ear. We're just right. going to listen to them and see what makes a difference. Right, because that's really all we're thinking about. And the funny thing is, is that different things sound different 
two different people. Yeah. When we did that mic shootout, everybody was saying, oh, you sound great on oh, that Oh, yeah, because no, we, we invite on that comments, mic. so we get tons of comments about what people think of the, is the best sounding mic. Right. And somebody I respect said, you sound great on the Bluebird. Or this is the baby bottle. Is that the baby bottle? That's the baby bottle. Yeah. The blue and baby bottle. Yeah. And I, I went out and bought one. Yeah. And as you see, it's not in my studio. It's out here where it's it out sounds here. good on everybody. Yeah. And in, in a in a large podcast, webcast yeah. type of situation. Uh, you'll notice we don't use lavalier mics on here or you know, RE20s like they do in a lot of podcasts because everybody likes to sound like they're on the radio. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're not trying to sound like we're on the radio. No, we're trying and, to sound like Dan and George, yeah. which is who we are. Um, yeah. So we have we're, we're going to have fun with that. That's coming up. If if you have a specific interface that is on your mind, if uh, you want to send it to us, <laughs> go for it. But this is going to be literally stuff from our own personal collection of stuff, which is pretty. It's, it's this starting is to just pile what was up. on my shelf at home. Yeah, yeah I've got, I got a few too. Dan's got a few too. Yeah, uh, I, Rode, I, yeah go yeah. Rode AI One, yeah. uh, Apollo Twin. I mentioned that we'll get the new Audient EVO4 or EVO4 Evo, uh, in the yeah. mix, probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Scarlet. All sorts of cool stuff. I think the point about, because you were talking about the Apollo. I digressed. Yes. Well, yeah, you jumped ahead there, but Good that's time. fine because I can roll this back to where we need to be. The thing about the Apollo is, don't get us wrong, it is an amazing unit. It is It is becoming an industry standard in the music business, For not sure. in voiceover. Yeah. Again, and we say this all the time, all of this stuff was never designed or even conceived of for being used in voiceover. We're just borrowing this technology because it gives us the ability to take our analog voice that comes through a microphone and, in, and into a digital interface, gets turned into ones and zeros, and printed on your your digital audio workstation in something that we can understand, that we can visually see. You know, and, the, and the technology behind the parts inside the box that makes all that stuff happen. Believe it or not, there's very few companies that actually make that little chip. Texas Instruments is one. Uh, there's a, I can't remember that. There's a couple, maybe two or three. Yeah. And they're, they're, so there's a lot of commonalities inside the box between them all. So there are almost no, no differences. Right. So it's just ones and zeros. So if you get an expensive interface like an Apollo Twin, the pe reason people ref uh, tend to refer to that one or recommend it is because they're recording engineers and they like the plugins and they do all these things after things are recorded because they are producing complete tracks using your voice, music, sound effects, mix, all these things, stuff that you don't have to deal with. Yeah. And that's what those plugins are for. They're not for cleaning up your audio. You do that physically in your studio. You get the cleanest possible sound you can from your acoustics. So there's no sound coming in. There's no sound bouncing around and you're using proper mic technique and you're setting proper levels. The rest of it, you keep hearing people recommend these stuff on all these websites and all these forums. It is irrelevant to voiceover. It's geekiness. If you like new and shiny and you like stuff that looks cool, it has nothing to do with how you read copy. Yeah. Well, we've heard I, that I have one spoken. before, haven't we? We, we? We're in the middle of writing a long article about this that you will read. <laughs> And so, you will listen to. I think I'm as much interested in hearing the difference between something maybe that's 10 years old and something that's brand new, too. Really? I think that's kind of, that's that's, going to that, be kind of interesting. That could be very interesting. Yeah, it's, how long have we been doing this? I've never done this shootout. This is something that's been years, literally years in the making. Yeah. Collecting leave, files yeah. of stuff. Leave me that task, Cam. I want to try that one. You got it. All right. <laughs> anyway, so that's happening. We'll have, an, we'll have the, uh, the Vanguard V4 microphone in here soon. Or actually, it is in here. Dan's working on a review of that right yes um which we mentioned from the nam show we saw that um so there's stuff coming up i just uh just hang tight so let's probably get to the questions we will a break i think we'll take a break and yeah. we'll do that so stay tuned we'll be right back with your questions and more stuff right here on voiceover body shop tech talk this is ariana ratner and you're listening to voiceover body shop vobs.tv Well, hello there. 
I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hey, everybody, it's time to talk about Source Elements. You know who they are, the creators of Source Connect, that tool that you don't have. What? You don't have it? You should have it. It's that tool that allows you to connect your studio to other studios around the world so they can record you from your booth. Uh, It's a tool you should have because even if you're not being asked for it now, You might be asked for it tomorrow or in a month or in a year. You want to have it ready to go and know how to use it. It's really the heir apparent to ISDN technology, and it is definitely what the pros are using. You can go ahead and sign up for a 15-day free trial of Source Connect over at SourceElements.com. Get it up and running. Get your iLock account in order. There's a little video on there. I'll teach you how to do it by yours truly. And it'll help you get up and running so you can understand how it all works. Then that day that you get the gig, you can activate the license. It's a no-brainer. Give it a try. Thanks for your support, Source Elements. And we'll see you right after this break. Hey, you know what this thing is? This is a Harlan Hogan Porta Booth Plus. And this is the carry bag that it comes in. You know, spring break is coming up. And if you're going to be on the road, you're going to want to have one of these to make sure that you can record nice and quiet and with no echo on the road. And right now, our viewers can save $10 on the Porta Booth Plus travel bag and $5 on their three way adjustable desktop stand. Both exclusive voiceover essential exclusive products. Spring break is coming up, so make sure you have one of these. This is a must-have for your traveling studio. Thanks, VoiceOver Essentials and Harlan Hogan, for being our sponsor for almost nine years. Go get one of these babies. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. And we've got questions from our audience out there. They they pile in here because they want they want to hear it from the oracles. And I'm glad that they do. That's right. Because <laughs> man, it gets we need stuff to talk about, guys. That's true. Yeah. And and you guys ask the questions. That's how we can riff on this and make sure that you get the right answer. Yeah. Uh first question we got tonight is from Thomas Machen. Oh, he's referring to the box full of things. The box full of things. This is a little inside joke, but he's saying, is there a Sennheiser mic in it? Ha ha. The reason he asked me that is I've had his Sennheiser MK4 digital mic Mm -hmm. for a year? Yeah, you might want to send it back to him. Sorry, Tom. (laughs) I'm sorry, man. It's been sitting by my door. There are several boxes of things like this in his house. So (laughs) I'm sorry. I suck. I apologize. It's going to go back to you this week. I'm going to... Say it here on the air. That way I have to do it. Um, John Ketron says, what's the what's the must-have gadget for voiceovers? A, a microphone? Gadget. Uh, a gadget. gadget. Do people use stopwatches anymore? I occasionally do. But I've, you know, I've got it on my watch. Yeah. Watch yeah. Or, or my, my iPhone. iPhone or... Or... Um, I don't know. An on-the-air light? Maybe, like, if you're trying to get your house to, you know, a light on a switch... Like a remote control, just like a wireless switch like you use for your Christmas tree lights right. or something. Yeah. Put a light out in the hall. It's a weird yeah. color. And when or, it's on, it means shut up. Right. Or get a Harlan Hogan voiceover the, recording light. Or the voiceover recording you light, know, which, yes. which we have, you know, in the studio here. And you can program that to different colors saying, you know, like I'm recording. I'm, yeah. You can walk in. Yeah. Of course, the most important thing I have in this studio is a big sign on the front that says, knock. 
which in this studio you can knock and because he's going to be in the other room in the booth. Right. Um, yeah, that's, I don't know, some way to, if you, if you have family or anybody else in your house, that can be handy, a way to notify them. One of my clients actually, we just put uh, this like a unique lamp with a blue light bulb on it. And we just put one in like each of the, like one in the kids' room. Right. And one in like the master. Because they're they're below in this apartment, and so he hits the remote in his booth, and they both turn on, and they know Dad's recording, just like at a regular keep, radio keep, station. Yeah, keep it on down. the air. Yeah, so that that I would say, I don't, so it doesn't sound that glamorous, but yeah, you wanted to know. It looks I mean, cool. I can't think of, I can't think of, other than all the usual stuff we talk about constantly. That's those yeah, are the biggies. Quicker. Oh, a dog clicker. A dog click. we, we've got a couple yes. of those. Uh, if you want to do the record, click, uh, mark your mistakes with a click, click, a loud click, a $3 dog clicker. Yeah. Is, uh, we used to have the voiceover nice body shop that. clickers that That's I was right. sending all over the world. And Time to maybe do a run of those. Import uh, documents to send them to Canada. Maybe we should do a run of those again for <laughs> VOP. Yeah, nice collector's stuff. item. Still have a couple of those left. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, what are other things? Well, you know, because we, we say the primary things you need to deal with are your acoustics, yeah, uh, mic technique, and setting proper levels. So how do you do all those things, and what's a gadget to do that? A microphone, a good interface, not a cheap interface, but not a really expensive one that's nice and shiny and has little, Too as we are just saying, all the things that are on there. Uh, what not to buy? How about what gadget not to buy? A well, we can, we can come, come up with a pile of those. A reflection filter. A reflection filter, any, yeah. any of those things that go the, around the yeah. mic or on the mic yeah. mostly are crappy. Yeah. I mean, uh, if, if you want an eyeball, just go to a conference. They're giving them away all the time. So, yeah. you know, it's, uh, I, li I like Uncle Roy's suggestion for that. Stuff socks in it. <laughs> yeah. Or a bagel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That worked pretty well, too. Oh, uh, Rob Ryder says, hey, gentlemen, here's, here's one for George. Okay. Everything special. Well, I'll just go over here for a while. <laughs> you can go into rest mode. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I heard you say a while back that you didn't particularly care for the U87 AI. Why not? It depends. Um, I, Because I, I, every time I hear it, it doesn't sound good as is, I find. It always needs some EQ to sound, to me, not a nice nice and those are just your ears yeah and that's that's a three thousand dollar mic that you need doesn't sound particularly flattering or nice on many voices that's i this is anecdotal just whatever but the, the thing is is it's not designed to be used in a closet no, and it was it, designed to. Be, it was designed, honestly, to be like an orchestral room mic, like a mic that's in a concert, in room. a huge space up yeah. on stands, or they've been used for anything you can imagine. I've seen them on drums. I've seen them on everything. But um, the the using it for voiceover, I don't know when that started. It was a New York thing mostly. Um, but yeah, if, it's only because it costs three grand that I really I think I'm like so anti the mic. It, because there's just so many darn good options for less than that nowadays. But um, it's a, kind of a holy grail mic, I guess. It also, um, it's because it's so incredibly well, it's so incredibly sensitive. And the cardioid pattern on it is still very, very wide. It picks up so Everything. much stuff you don't want it to pick up. Your booth has to be exquisitely well, exquisitely well tuned. And, um, and the high pass filter on it is, is basically not, is not usable. It's a weird frequency that the high pass filter, it's like, I think it's like 150 hertz or something, and then it rolls, starts rolling off. It's just, it just doesn't make sense for, for what most voice actors actually need. So that's, there you go. That's enough, I think. Okay. Uh, cool nibble it. Uh, I rec George recommended a, a Rode NTG3, and my question is, with a 416 costing roughly 300-ish more than the NTG3, Last I checked, it was 600-ish more, actually. Yeah. Um, would it be worth it to fork out the extra dough and get the 416? Um, so the NTG3 is roughly $300. The 416 not stolen or on eBay is going to be $900, $800 to $1,000. Um, I'm seeing them on eBay for under 600 I Yeah, if you buy it on eBay, buy it from like a... Buy it from someone who's really reputable or from a retailer with a return policy yeah. because there actually were a batch of uh, 
Chinese. Very, movie. very good knockoffs yeah. that were incredibly convincing. BSW seven ninety nine. Oh, BSW has Santa that Joe. Santa Joe mm. co- coupon. There's a Santa Joe coupon on uh, BSW for a discount on the four sixteen. Um, you know, when it, when I recommend things that aren't the four sixteen, it's mainly just to save money, right? So it's for people that want a second mic. Or they that jump to a 416's cost is just prohibitive. Then I'm going to recommend things like the NTG3, the NTG4. Oh, you know what? You're right. The price difference is. I'm sorry, I got my model numbers mixed up. The NTG3 is roughly 699. I'm thinking of the four, the NTG4. The NTG3 and the NTG and the 416 are similar looking, but sound totally different. I don't know if you've ever really tried them together, I, I, but I've heard them. The, the NTG3 is much more warm, like lower end has more low end mm-hmm. richness, and then it's flatter at the top. That's actually a really nice mic on many women's voices. It's not a sibilant. Yeah, it's yeah. smoother. It doesn't have a sibilance peak that the 416 has. But the 416 is that cut through the mix, you know, sound and it's they're very very different mics so the answer is they they sound different so if you can do like an a b test from and get a borrow them or buy both and return one so you can hear how that sounds with your voices your your needs in your studio right then you can make a judgment call but they are dramatically different sounding it's not it's not subtle they're they're different yeah well that gets me into a question we got this week uh from a guy by the name of mike gordon uh I'll paraphrase. This is a whole story. This is a whole story. This is a guy who's, he's 70 years old, spent time in the Navy with learning Navy electronics and was- He's been there, done that. Yeah. It was in the broadcasting business. Uh, He was, he's been homeless. He's uh, currently has cancer and they said he has only a few years to live, but I think he's probably doing better than that. So he's like 70 years old. He says, I wanted to do something different with my life. And I wanted to do voiceover. Oh. And without knowing about us, he has a Rode NT1A, uh, you know, uh, a complete audio 6DI. Good basic uh, setup. Yeah. Uh, st- started practicing and he's been doing all these things. He's doing some inspirational stuff. Uh, and then he, somebody suggested he watch our show oh. and listen to a couple of things we said about mic placement and all these things. And he had terrible sibilance trouble. He took the couple of things that we told him, and now he sounds great. Then he asks about, he sends me four pieces of audio, uh-huh. different microphones, different setups. Uh-huh. Says, Which one's best? And I listen to all of them. The guy sounds great on all of them. No, is there, is, does it sound slightly more echoey on one and then the other? Hmm. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. The point is, is that it's not the microphone. And it's not the interface. They're all no, different but... shades of moth, by the way. Exactly. Uh, you're picking colors. Yeah. They're almost all. Yeah. The I mean, it's, it's an inspiring story, but the fact is, is that you can't obsess about the equipment. Mm. It's not the equipment that gets you work. It's your ability to be a good voice actor and your ability to interpret copy and not, well, as we like to say, it's not a matter of sounding good. You don't want, I used to say, the idea of your home studio is not to sound great. It's to make you sound like you. Right. And the addendum to that is and you don't want to sound good. You don't want to sound bad. And it's so much easier to sound bad than it is to sound good because you cut corners or you, you're, yeah. you know, your, your acoustics are wrong or you're over modulating or you're not using the mic. You're talking right into it. And you know, that sort of thing, Yeah. which we hear an awful lot of, although my favorite still is, why does my mic sound so muffled? <laughs> because oh. you're talking into the wrong side. Do that again, because I didn't have that mic on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why does my mic sound muffled? <laughs> yeah, that was a good example. Yeah, a good example. Because, amazingly, and this this happened last week at my, my son's uh, studio where they were recording over there. And it's like, Dad, it, it sounds, why does it sound so echoey and muffled? I'm like, turn the mic around. And it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Which is why this microphone just makes me sound sweet. The other way, it it's makes me sound like I'm on the other side of the room. So, because <laughs> it's pointing at you, yeah. yeah. But although, and that's sort of like, why does it sound like I'm talking into my computer? Because you are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, but Mike, uh, we're we're real glad that you wrote to us, and uh, we wish you luck. And don't worry about the microphone. It's not the microphone. Your voice is great. You got a great delivery, and that's all that matters. And you don't sound bad. Mm -hmm. Um, couple more from Thomas Machen. If you use two brands and models of mics like Paul does, uh, (laughs) one to capture dialogue, and the other for efforts, will there be a detectable difference? To who? Yeah, I mean, how how different do they actually sound, Paul? When you have to do you ever do that, and do you ever edit them together? Let me point this mic that way. Uh, we actually, Dan and I, we sh- shot them out, and we could barely notice a difference between the two. Yeah. I mean, they. Could, I rest my case. Exactly, different functionality. I mean, one's a different cardioid, uh, you know, diaphragm microphone, and same room. Yeah, mm-hmm. same room. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> so he, he he can intercut them pretty pretty closely and uh it works fine especially if you're using one for really loud reads and screaming the, the sound of your voice is so dramatically different that if the mic sounded different it wouldn't matter anyway it's that's right two different almost right. sources right, right. And, with, and with the 416 you use it two different ways if you're doing promo work you do it up close and you back off the, yeah. the volume a little bit it really is great for if you're doing you know lots of choking and puking or you know yeah. as they like to say uh, you know, trying to sound like the voice of God. Right. It's a great microphone for that. But nobody's asking for that unless you're doing promo. Yeah. Otherwise, they just want you to sound like you, in which yeah. case you 416, uh, you know, 30 degree angle, pay, aim towards your chest and you're fine. Yeah, that's a good job. Um, another quickie from Thomas. I th- last time George and I spoke, we agreed to avoid .0 versions. What does that mean? It means like version 13.0 just came out. Let's rush and go and install that. That is still true. It will be true for the end of time. Mm. The version that the first X version dot anything, 13.0, you know, Catalina dot O, 15 dot O, whatever it was. Bad idea. That is, hasn't is, changed. It, is it time to go to Catalina on my Mac Mini? Um, it keeps asking me to do it. I know it does. And I'm like, eh, George hasn't given the green light on it yet. So. People, well, people that use audacity so people that are well maybe audacity um people that are buying new max that already have catalina and it's on i think it's 0.3 version now yeah it's, it's been fine I, I don't know anybody directly with a brand new mac that is running catalina that is having any particular problems okay upgrading to catalina there's a lot more little hurdles sometimes so yeah. you know make it make sure you back up and have a clone or a time machine copy and, a, and some free time before well, I you just, plunge into I just it. do it and I'm like, I'm going to bed. And next yeah. morning it's there. Yeah. I almost never have well, a problem. people on Windows are used to that. Yeah. They wake up every morning and every, <laughs> every Wednesday, <laughs> actually every Wednesday morning. <laughs> I know, I'm jabbing the Windows. Mm-hmm. You wake up every Wednesday morning and there's a new version of Windows on your computer. Um, Beatrice Ryan says, Arg. 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 Recently I got the USB Apollo Twin for Windows. Oh, well. Ouch. Sorry to hear that. I'm waiting on the TLM 103 to arrive. That's her next mic. Um, a recommended interface to go to instead. I was just going to look at the 2i2 before my boyfriend insisted on that something more expensive. Her boyfriend must be um, a musician. Yeah, probably <laughs> an engineer or musician. Um, so, yeah, I know I teased it at the beginning of the show and didn't really answer it. I kind of deflected it by saying we're going to test some stuff. Honestly, I've had a client who recently went with an Apollo on Windows. It was a headache. Went to RME Babyface because they heard it was really good. It was too complicated, made her made her head explode. Then I said, get a Scarlet. No, I'm not, I'm sorry. In that case, a Steinberg. Mm-hmm. I think it might have been the UR22. I can't remember. Or the 12, one of those. Happy as a clam. It was a month journey of, of frustration for her. And in the end, getting the least expensive, simplest, straightforward thing. Sounded good and became a problem solver. So I'm going to recommend the Scarlet. Uh, maybe the Gen 3 now. Or the Steinberg UR12. I'm still going to recommend well, those. She she says, uh, you know, the sales dude at Banjo Emporium. Thank you oh, for a using. Fan, obviously, I, I clearly uh, <laughs> insisted the Scarlet 2i2 would diminish the capabilities of the TLM 103. There was a time Not when, sad. yeah, these old old interfaces. Maybe that was really mm. a thing. That's a thing to sell new gear and mic preamps. That's yeah. not a thing anymore. Yeah. And the guys at Banjo Emporium, guess what their job is? They're musicians and their job is to sell stuff More to musicians. Stuff. Don't ever go in there. Dan's number one rule of retail never walk into Banjo Emporium yeah. 
uh, without knowing what you want, never ask, well, what would be good for me? They don't know, and they have... They have no idea what's going on. It's like wandering onto a used car lot and (laughs) saying, what's the best car today? Oh, Uh, well, I have an Alfonso di Credenza here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Alfonso di Credenza. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, Fred North is using an audience something or other, didn't say, with my 103 and my 416. It's a great pairing. Yeah. Good for you. I'm glad, Fred, that it's working out well for you. Um, I'm going to go fast because we thankfully got a ton of questions. Um, next one up is Tim Kelly. Hi, guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm getting intermittent clicks on playback from a 2i2 second gen. It's like a tiny voltage click. It spits mm-hmm. now and again. Uh, cables are fine. I tried different USB cables. Also have to buffer in the highest in audition. Thanks. I'll bet I find it's always it's a 5200 RPM hard drive. Hard drive. I'm finding that over and over again that the hard drive's not fast enough, that any one of these units should be fine. And, and if you're getting that type of stuff, it's the computer, not the interface. Typically, yeah. I mean, I had a client today who had a clicking issue as well, but it was in the recordings, unfortunately. Yeah. And he had a decent MacBook Pro with a SSD and everything. Yeah. And in his case, I just said, maybe it is the interface. It's an inexpensive thing to test yeah. by replacing. Um, but if it's on playback... It's yeah. definitely not in the recording. It's on playback. Yeah. No, well, that's uh, that's a different one. Yeah, that's interesting. I I uh, huh. yeah, it could be the hard drive, but it could be the interface. It's um, again, it's a cheap thing to test. Yeah. I these are not expensive pieces of gear. You can get one from Amazon and re- rent one from Amazon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, borrow uh, one from a friend. So you're just changing the interface, and if it does it, with the, it, then it's not the interface. Yeah. Process elimination. Yeah. Let's go on to Hunter Peterson here. Hey. Hey, guys. How would you go about cleaning up a signal from an interference, from the interference from power cords? Just separating the XLR cable, or is there a better shielding option? Generally not a problem with condenser mics. It's pretty rare that it happens. But... You know, if you got ribbon mics or something, and you're setting up with, you know... Thing is, we don't black know what and white, kind of, you know, broadcast of some sort. But yeah, we don't know what kind of interference he's referring to. There's well, he's saying RFI. Yeah, well, he's saying electrical interference. Yeah, really, that MFI, could be. MFI. It, it, there could be. A, so radio frequency would be like literally something bleeding in from the outside, like some radio station. Well, he's saying from power cords, specifically. Yeah. So generally, that's Cross not. Cross them a, at an X, always. Yeah. Like if you have a mic cable and a power cord, never keep them parallel ever. Right. Have them cross like this, and uh, you won't. It's that will eliminate the uh, picking up. That's called induction. So, like when there's power running on this wire, there's no one running alongside it. This one can pick up the power actually in the other. It's a magnetic thing. Right. And so that's that's where you can get some humming or buzzing. Right. But so generally, with an XLR cable, it's a balanced cable. There's usually no interference on it. There, there are. There are cables with more shielding. What do they call it? Star quad or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. They have a better shielding on them. If you have a real major issue, you could try that. Um, and but, move away from the AM radio station transmitter that you're talking next to, Yeah, <laughs> which I, will do it. Yeah, no. It's, having a really good mic cable can sometimes get rid of interference. Yeah. It can. Um, Bill Russell, help. Bill. I thought I set up Bill the Russell, little... always saying help, hey, like Bill. he is in our intro. I know, I know. Exactly. <laughs> um, hey, I thought I set up the latency in my system to stop artifacting. I'm still getting artifact clicks. Another clicking problem, hmm. person. And I forgot how to change the latency to prevent artifacts. Help. Is there a quick help? Nope. And there's not because, Bill, you didn't tell us any relevant information at all. What, interface? Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> No soup for you. <laughs> Give us details. You know, and it's amazing that people people We're say being hard on Bill. Cause yeah, because we, we just we, know, we love we him anyway. <laughs> uh, but still, you got to give us more frequency. more details. It's like amazing. you know, system. You know, computer. What mic you're using? Uh, what interface? All these things. It's not like all things being equal. They're not. I'm sure we'll see them pop up in the chat room shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rob Ryder, thanks for the response about the UAD. Wow, we're getting like responses to the questions. From okay, earlier. that's all fun. right. Good. Excellent. I certainly agree about the high pass filter. I actually use my 87 in a 13 by 17 foot room. Wow, that's nice. By 17 foot wow. room, room. Oh, yeah, but I do have a baffle off the back side of the mic, okay. and I do have to admit that my Sennheiser MK4 sounds just as good, and it only costs 300. dollars 
It's almost disheartening. It shouldn't about be. Stop reading these forums and stuff. <laughs> microphone. As long as it's a oh, good man. microphone, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, know, I understand it's disheartening. I get that a lot where people buy a really expensive stuff and then I tell them it's not that stuff and then they get frustrated. Or the worst was pe is people that get Pro Tools, invest in Pro Tools, oh, learn Pro Tools, and then I convince them to not use it. And they're like, but I learned it and I bought it, and but it's given me all these problems. And I'm like, you know what well, the answer duh. is. You just won't listen. I know it's frustrating, but it's true. It's the hard truth. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's still a matter of people... As you like to say, we keep teaching each other all these sayings. Yours is, "Don't crowdsource your home voiceover studio." Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, what's the best microphone? What should I do? And there are a couple of forums out there, and and you and I just look at it and go, <laughs> "You're not listening, guys. Uh, Stop! It's not the equipment." And yeah. people recommending equipment are recommending equipment that works well for them. For their voice in their studio. And it's irrelevant to you in your closet because every room is different, every voice is different, and it doesn't matter. And the one that you borrowed from me that you keep using is you don't hire you. You don't hire you. Uh, last one, and then we can wrap this up. It's been a marathon of it questions. Has. But it's great. We it's love it. Guys. Energizing. Um, what are good DAWs, digital audio workstations, for iPad? Oh, that's um, just getting one. into voiceover, and I'll be setting up my interface into an iPad for yeah, practice. Let me, let me grab my iPad here. Well, my wife has the laptop. So <laughs> the wife's got a laptop, you got the iPad. How's that being for being born under a bad sign? Yeah, you can always buy another computer. Well. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, a $300, dare I say, PC or uh, even a five-year-old MacBook is really a better tool for what we're doing than an iPad. Yeah. Um, the software on iPad, there are some... They're either overly complicated or they're under featured. And this is, I've tried a lot of things. They either have, they're trying to cram the features of it, get a super complicated Pro Tools like program into an iPad, and you're doing it all with your finger, which doesn't always work very well. Or there's Twisted Wave for iPad, which is pretty darn good until you try to use it every day, all day. And then you'll start to become very, uh, you'll, you'll lose patience for the fact that there's, no actual operating system or file system where you can easily move files around. You can't easily do certain things that are just you take for granted on a, on a computer. But here's Twisted Wave on the iPad. It's uh, It looks like that. It look, and it's super duper simple. It looks eerily like the desktop version. It is. And it works similarly. The interface is, of course, touch, so it's got some real differences. Um, it's lacking this stacking feature, which is nice if you want to have a couple little polishing presets for uh, certain audition type work. So that's a little annoying. But at the end of the day, for ten bucks, uh, Twisted Wave on iPad is pretty much the winner, and it will be until something else comes along yeah. that dethrones it. I think. Right. Well, you've got to have the interface that will work, you know, on a new iPad with a you know a Thunderbolt cable or yeah you know, oh. a, a Lightning cable. This reminds so, me of a huge pet peeve. I'm glad I brought it up then. On iOS, <laughs> and this isn't just iPad; it's, it's anything iOS, iPhones, iPad. There is no interface selection function in anything on the on the iPad. So when you hit record, it's a complete freaking crapshoot. What's what's going to record? Is it going to record the mic on the phone or the iPad? Or is it going to record the mic that you plugged in? Yeah. I had to deal with that the other day because I was setting somebody up on an iPad. Yeah. She was recording in a closet and she wanted it simple. She wanted to be able to read the copy yeah. and just have and just have it there. Right. And I'm like, okay. And when she re plugged in an Epogee mic, wouldn't Didn't work. Didn't recognize it. Had to go in and download different uh a the firmware up, thing? It was firmware oh, update firmware for the update. for the for the for the mic oh, man. but yeah. once we did it then it worked it just you know you plug yeah. it in and it At becomes a default the uh, thing original apogee mic broke and then they had to do a firmware update right. to work on a newer ios blah 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 it's yeah it's it's uh frustrating when it doesn't actually detect and every single time you record you have to double check maybe 
Yep, it's that mic. Mm. <laughs> because it's you just you just don't know. On it and and it's annoying. Make sure you get it right. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's <laughs> I'm spent. <sighs> Boy, but oh, here's yeah. the thing, guys. I mean, just asking these questions, the ones that have to do with why doesn't this work and why should I use this, that we thrive on that. That's why we're here. Yeah. And and hopefully, you know, convincing you to keep it simple and not knock yourselves out with got to get the best mic. Because the best mic is going to make your room sound like a really big room. And yeah. the more sensitive the mic, the more the imperfections of the room you're in come up, become apparent. And that's when everybody's like, well, I have a U87. Now I got to use all this, you know, all these filters and stuff like that. It picks up every mouth click, even ones I'm not making. They're coming from people next door. <laughs> You know, and so you got to use all the software to fix that. And yeah. it's like, yeah, do it right up front. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's enough. I think George's brain is actually beginning yeah. to bleed from all this. And literally, I have a, a client who's chomping at the bit who paid for the rush fee to talk to me in five minutes. So we got to wrap this up. So let's wrap this up. We'll be right back to wrap this up right <laughs> after this. And you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. What question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the VOHeroes.com free Getting Started in VO course. You heard right, it's free. And it's available online 24 7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Of course you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, Go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Dot TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. Man, I think we talked louder and louder as the night went on. I know, because we were getting angry, we angry. <laughs>
It, it's 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 like we're like trying to kill our own business by telling people don't do this. I've and been don't saying do that. that for years. Like <laughs> but, was, but we're still here. So I was trying to make more money. That you need to run Pro <laughs> Tools, and you know you need the you need the Apollo Twin, and you need this seven different plugins. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm glad I've worked you in properly since I got here. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, it costs a little bit of money to do this show. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we have all this equipment, and we have a director, and professional staff. Well, somewhat, uh, and uh, but we need to we're, we're, we need to maintain those sorts of things, and we really appreciate the donations that we get from people. Uh, and it's easy to donate. There's if you go to our homepage, vobs.tv, and there's a donate now button. Mm -hmm. You can set up a uh, you know like. Like NPR, they do it every every season. <laughs> they and they, they got a much bigger budget than we do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you can go there, and we have people that have actually donated this week. And who are they? Uh, Christy Burns, Michael Kearns, Mike Gordon, Harlow Rodriguez, Nine Four Nine Designs. Hey, that's Lee Penny. Lee Penny, Martha Kahn, and Shauna Pennington Baird. All righty. Hey, we Thank want you. you. Yeah, we want you to show us your booths. Now, this week, I thought this would make a great background for what we were talking about, because this is what we were talking about. <laughs> exactly. uh, that but, looks like Twisted Wave. Yes, it is Twisted Wave. Oh. Uh, so send us a picture of your booth uh, in landscape, not portrait. Right. You know, the world is not in we portrait. We haven't quite decided to, to show up on TikTok yet. What is TikTok? <laughs> God, go. I'm getting old. All you need to know right there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I know by next week, my mom's going to be using it, and she's 89 years old. So. <laughs> it's true. Um, anyway, send us your pictures of your booth. Send them to the guys at vobs.tv, mm -hmm. which Sue will now put up right now. And there's, there's our, our email address. Also, if you want to be in our audience here to attend all this stuff live and maybe ask questions or make rude comments, you can <laughs> by uh, writing to that same address and say, hey, uh, when are you doing the show? I'm going to be in the greater Los Angeles area as opposed to the lesser Los Angeles area. Uh, and uh, you can come join us here and uh, be in the show live, which would be just great. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, by the way, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. Uh, hey, we also need to uh, thank uh, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live and recorded web and podcasting. And, of course, Sue Merlino, our amazing technical director, who is dead on tonight. She got it done. Yep. Jeff Holman, who's stepping into the seat for uh, Chat Social Media. Mod. Great job tonight. Yeah, you know, just you. stepped right in, and those questions were there, and that's what we need. Yeah. And, and Lee Penny. For being Lee Penny. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We're going to have another great guest next week, so stay tuned for the announcement of who that's going to be, because it could be anybody. But we'll find out then. <laughs> anyway, just remember, if it sounds good... It is good. All righty. Well, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Yes. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you, not in September, but in late February. <laughs>